Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is me i'm Austin Zell, also known as me i no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook formats on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios and sponsored by international award-winning author mia mosin zia of missing the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time for official shout out for our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Minos. So grab your copy today of Fogo's Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music. Also heard on Hamilton Radio. Also on Oldies FM, Diamonds Radio, and a few networks coming soon. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. I'll support the Mike Widener Show with your generous gift on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you give generously today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's a graduate from Pacific Coast Bible College and has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology, became a missions director for Calvary Chapel in San Jose, California. He moved to Colorado and signed up with Big Fish Talent out of Denver, appeared in numerous commercials, short films, and also wrote a screenplay called Nino Cochise. And uh, this was part of a vision they uh, had, which took place during um, the COVID as well. He's an Anver Rio Native American in Old Western history and spent 40 years in search of biblical truth. And his new book, to hell with the devil, it's time to blow the lid off of Lucifer's conf- coffin. It's about Satan's ability to see the church and Christians since AD 330 in Rome under Emperor Constantine and is infiltrated into the U.S. government, also as false teaching, also the churches as well, and he'll uh, talk about those. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in beautiful downtown Colorado, the multi-talented author, To Hell with the Devil, it's time to blow the lid off of Lucifer's coffin. Ladies and gentlemen, the author, Gary Randall Wallace. Gary, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Mike. 
Well, Gary, it's great to have you on board as well, too, and uh, talk a little bit. You are a graduate from uh, Pacific Coast Bible College uh, with a BA in uh, theology, became missions director for Calvary Chapel in San Jose. You moved to Colorado and you signed up with Big Fish Talent out of Denver with a number of works. You're an avid uh, reader of Native American and Old Western history, spent 40 years in search of biblical truth, and your new book, To Hell with the Devil, It's Time to Blow the Lid Off of Lucifer's Coffin, about Satan's ability to deceive the church and Christians since AD 330. So it's been a long time, and um, I guess we talked a little bit. It's uh, due to come off soon. And before getting to all that, uh, Gary, tell us how you first got started. Well, uh, it really goes back over 45 years ago. I, I only had one vision in my life, and in that vision, it came in two parts. The first part came to pass 10 years later. Uh, the second part was so overwhelming, and it's hard to explain what I saw that I, I was totally dumbfounded. I was in, almost in a frozen. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, but the first part was revealed and happened. The second part is, which has been shut off all this time. All this, all these years, that second part was so overwhelming, but I knew it had to, had to have something to do with the end times in the last days. That's all I can remember. But it didn't really start to open up. In fact, the whole second part of that vision is still not completely opened up. But it did begin to open up on March 2020. Of course, everyone knows that's when the COVID thing happened, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I studied scriptures now every night. I mean, it's too hard to do it during the day. You get too many interruptions. But as you can tell by the title, uh, this is going to be a very controversial book. Probably not make me very popular either, but uh, because when I say uh, we're going to blow the lid off Lucifer's coffin, that's exactly what I mean. Um, I prove in Scripture, and I don't, you know, that's a, King James Version is my, what I read. I, I don't, you know, uh, everything I've written has come from the Word of God, nothing else. I don't take church doctrine or some professor's uh, interpretation of Scripture. This comes directly from the Scriptures. And the thing is, as Paul mentioned back in that New Testament, that he said, one day there's going to come oh, the falling away. Oh, let me, let me retract on that. He said, I've got several scriptures in my head of floating around. <laughs> and he said, that one day that, I can't even think of it at my age now, senior Europe. But there's going to come a time when men will turn away from the truth and turn to fables. Uh, and he was talking about the last days, and that's exactly what has happened in our time. Uh, it's been going on for quite a while. I think, as most people know, the church today, I, I see on the news, the attendance of churches dropped down to like 50% maybe mm -hmm. at the most. There's, there's definitely a falling away of the church, and he mentioned the falling away. If there comes a falling away, then that man of sin is going to be revealed, which I already know who, is, who it is, and most people that have studied the Word of God know who it is. The whole Protestant movement began uh, back in Martin Luther. But and I mentioned in the book, uh, what I do is to debunk uh, these false teachings, and of course Lucifer is one of them, uh, I debunk a burning hell. I, I can debunk that in one verse of scripture. Uh, I debunk uh, the immortality. I debunk uh, the uh, evil spirits, life after death. What, do we, what happens when we die? Uh, and this is, like I said, this is totally the truth. Lucifer is only mentioned one time in the entire Bible, and that's Isaiah 14. In fact, Lucifer is not even mentioned in the Hebrew Bibles, uh, because that word, I think, it was, is it, it, he, uh, Lucifer is a Latin word, I think, by uh, Jerome, it's called the Venus, star Venus. But anyway, obviously, we've got a whole, <laughs> a lot of people that are Luciferian, Satanist worshipers, and et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to prove to them that 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 scripture says in Isaiah 14, it says, take this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay, a proverb is the same thing as a parable, except the parables in the Greek. And when Jesus spake in parables, he spake, you know, in parables spake he not. Well, a parable in the Greek says a fictitious narrative about life concerning morals. A proverb is the same, except it's in the Hebrew. 
And it's all metaphorical. So we got, you know, if you start that fourth verse, take this proverb against the king of Babylon, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about anybody else. Yeah, it mentions Lucifer as a metaphorical term. And uh, if you go to Daniel 4, you will see the entire the entire scenario in Daniel 4 with Nebuchadnezzar. But the one, I've got key verses here that nail this fact that it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, he did exist, uh, let's say, over 2,500 years ago, but that was only referring to Nebuchadnezzar. But somehow we've got a whole the masses of people that worship Lucifer, uh, getting into the dark sciences, uh, secret societies, all this stuff. And uh, I don't know what they're going to do once they find out that uh, <laughs> he doesn't exist. He's been dead for over 2,500 years. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not going to be popular probably because, uh, like Jesus said, when the you know Sadducees and Pharisees wanted to kill him or – uh, and he, he says, well, for what good work do you want to kill me for? Oh, it's not your good work. You claim to be God and forgive sins. Well, they were absolutely right. Only God can forgive sins. A human can't forgive sins. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons he was crucified. It was for blasphemy. But um, I'm hoping through this book to reveal to people, especially at the times we're living in, I mean... I, even myself, I knew what was coming. I mean, I'm not everything, but I knew what was coming for over 45 years. But never in my wildest imagination would I see what's taken part, what's happened so quickly in our world. And it's got all to do with the COVID. Uh, and I can go deep into that. And, they'll, you know, there's so much you could go into that. But I prove beyond a doubt that Lucifer does not exist. He never has. And uh, I prove a burning hell is that's one of the biggest <laughs> false doctrines ever preached. When I got when I was young and I got saved, I, I belonged to a Pentecostal church, and uh, I remember the preaching about burning hell and et cetera, et cetera. And I I thought some doesn't make sense. I, God so loved the world, but now if you don't believe in Christ, you're gonna all forever. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I thought, of course, I hadn't read the Bible, so I, I really didn't know until I really got to study uh, about a burning hell and Lucifer immortality. And I can just take, and I will give you just one verse, because I'm not going to get all into the book here. But there's a verse in First Timothy 6 chapter, and it's talking about Jesus. There's only one potentate, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Only he has immortality that dwells in the light, which no man has seen and no man has approached. That's talking about God the Father. So in other words, the church still teaches out here, well, you know, when you die, uh, you, you're going upstairs or you're going, you're going downstairs. <clears throat> well, that's not true. Because first of all, you don't have immortality. You do not, you're not born. And that's what always amazes me that the church teaches still today that, you know, when, when you die, either it's upstairs or downstairs forever, all, all eternity. I can blow that way. That, that, that one verse says, Jesus is the only one that has immortality. Okay. Well, if, if, if that's true and it is true, well, you have to have immortality to go to hell and burn forever. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do it unless your soul is eternal or immortal. And there's no place in the Bible Nowhere. This says immortal soul, eternal soul. And uh, if you can find that on the page in the book, I'll, I'll uh, eat it up, chew it out, spit it out. But anyway, um, what I'm, my hope is in this book, once someone reads this and they understand God's word and God's love, it, it, it's, it's amazing. And I, and I, I get, I wonder, you know, is, is churches still preach that when John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. And I don't know why they skip that word. It means in the Greek, utterly destroyed. Okay. To give you what? To give you eternal life. But here, the church has already said, you got it. You've got, already got eternal life because you're going to burn in hell forever or you're going to go upstairs forever. No, 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 no. Nowhere in the Bible says that. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and if, now, now, if the Catholics were listening right now here, and uh, I guess we'll get some uh, questions about with the Catholics and everything, what would you say to the Catholics, especially when it comes to purgatory? 
Well, I mean, you can watch, uh, in fact, you just watched the other night. Uh, they had a, on YouTube about the Pope and what they believe. They don't even believe in Genesis. Mm-hmm. Uh, the players, they believe in Darwin, Darwinism and all that stuff. Uh, you know, and, uh, and he declares, I mean, himself that, that, that the book of Genesis is false. That's what, that's the Pope. Uh, so a purgatory, I don't know where to get that because there's no such thing. There's no such thing as a purgatory. Uh, where that comes up, you have to do the study in the church and the Catholic church. But that's, uh, one of the things that the poor Catholics and God love them. And I'm, and this is, and I'm not trying to demean Catholics. Some of the Catholics are the best Christians in the world. Uh, you know, but Bottom line is, there's false teaching, and it always has been false. If you go all the way back to around 330 A.D., time of Constantine, and uh, the Christian church went to bed with Rome, and of course, with, when they went to bed with Rome, that's the involvement of the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. But I will say this, and I'll declare it to be the truth. Uh, the Catholic Church, and that teaching... Uh, is, is false. In other words, it is not a Christian church. It's a pagan church. And you, the reason I say that, just look at what they, when, when Constantine came on board, he took all the idols all the way back from Egypt, Egypt and Assyria, Babylon, and Medo-Persians, uh, Greece, Rome. He's got all these symbolic things. And you go back, even back to the Book of the Dead, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that teaching and that system, and you know, I think most people know, that during the Inquisitions and during the Dark Ages, they killed millions. Millions of Christians died, tortured, burned alive on a stake, or beheaded. And, uh, but of course, you know, the Catholic Church, we're sorry. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry doesn't get it. But, uh, it, it's time to expose the truth. And that's what I, that's what I, you know, have done for the past 45 years. And this book is only 50 pages, but it has the most powerful truth, I think, that anybody will ever read. And even if you're not a Christian and you haven't really maybe read the Bible, you can understand common sense. Mm-hmm. And since is God so loved the world, period. And I blow this thing of burning hell, which is nonsense, because if you go to the Old Testament, Second Kings 17, 17, the reason the ten tribes were separated was because they were burning their kids alive on these false gods, the god Molech. They had to heat the arms up red hot, put the babies there and burn them alive. God said, it never came to the end of my heart. It's an abomination. And that's when he brought Assyria and separated those ten tribes. Well, about a hundred years or so later, Judah began the same thing. He said they burned the kids alive in the Valley of Hinnom. And then God judged them the same way. Because of that, and, and you read that in uh, Jeremiah 7, I think it's 29 to 30. Uh, he, separ- he said, King Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Jerusalem, and that was because they were burning their kids alive to these false gods. And people don't understand that, but, you know, that's a loving father. I mean, and, and you know, to, to say God's going to pop you in an oven and turn you into a crispy critter for all eternity, that's just utter nonsense. Mm-hmm. Right. Ex- you know? Right. Exactly. And, of course, uh, how does it um, manage to work its way into the government? We'll find out in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Widener's show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. 
missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com on over 40 podcast platforms. Heard in over 100 countries, including Hamilton Radio, Diamonds FM, Oldies Radio, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today for great gift ideas. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and or great books, merchandise, and more. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Show.com with your generous donation. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the author of um, the book, To Hell with the Devil. It's time to blow the lid off of Lucifer's coffin. Get right around the walls here on the Mike Widener Show. And before continuing talking about the book and how um, Satan has infiltrated into the um, government sector as well, too, you graduate from Pacific Col- Bible College with a BA in theology. You also moved to Colorado. You signed up with uh, Big Fish. And uh, tell us about your journey going from um, Pacific uh, Coast and become a missions director over to uh, Colorado. Tell us about your journey. <laughs> Well, it, I, we came in about 1990, I think it was, when we moved out here from uh, California. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I had this vision for over 45 years, and, and the first part took place, and that second part was yet to come, and I never knew exactly what that part was. All I remember, I sat there with my mouth open, totally amazed, could, I couldn't even speak, and I remember asking the Lord, I said, Lord, w- will I have a part in this? I- am I going to have a part in what you're showing me here? And I said, Lord, if I open this book to Isaiah 6, it confirms that I will have a part. Because he, when I first got saved, I had a, one night, I, the Lord woke me up three times. Mm-hmm. Uh, three times the voice said, and I was in a dead sleep. Mm-hmm. Read Isaiah 6, 6. And, you know, I'm just going, oh, what's that about? Okay. Uh, second time I woke up, and I was in a dead sleep. Read Isaiah 6.6. 6. And then, you know, I'm going, oh, well, this must be the Lord, I, I guess. I don't know. So I said, okay. You know, I just went back to sleep. <laughs> I told the Lord, the third time, read Isaiah 6. This is three times out of a dead sleep. And I mean just a dead sleep. And uh, so that was the confirmation, I guess, when I asked the Lord to show me if this is this vision comes from you is what I'm seeing happening in these last what I believe was the last days. And I know now it is. But uh, I sure enough. And, and this is in the dark. I had, of course, I had my Bible next to the bed. I opened that Bible to exactly Isaiah six. So I knew that this was from the Lord. And the first part of the vision took place 10 years later. So I knew this was going to happen, but what that second part of that vision was so overwhelming that I couldn't, I mean, I, I understand now why God shut it off, because I'd never be able to handle all those years of knowing what's coming and the things that are coming upon this earth. It, it's, uh, and I truly believe, in, as in Joel too, and there's other, Zechariah, several other books, that it, the day of the Lord's coming. Mm-hmm. And I, I never thought it'd be in my lifetime I knew it's coming, but I really believe, Mike, right now we're going to see that day. God is going to judge what's going on in this world today. Mm -hmm. And God's people, you know, and these, unfortunately, we've got a lot of false prophets out there, uh, you know, and and preaching about, uh, you know, wealth, get your money, send me $10,000 of your money, God's going to bless you, and I can buy myself another jet. Kind of like that thing, if you know. Or doghouse, yeah. (laughs) Or doghouse. But air conditioning. Um, so that um, was a confirmation. And especially, one thing I'd like to mention, uh, uh, you've you got these preachers, I mean, you got thousands, mega churches, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a guy in Texas, got a stadium. Imagine, Can you imagine if everyone just gave 25 cents to that offering? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know something? Joel, I, I've seen, um, you know, preach from the old, um, what was it, the summit? That, that where the Houston Rockets once played, that building was originally for the Houston Rockets, designed 
for the Houston Rockets. Not a church per se, and they said, God bless this church, he built it. That was originally for the Houston Rockets. It was called the Summit. Yeah, yeah. Now think about this. With all that multitude in that church, think about Jesus. Uh, How long did he preach? Three and a half years? Mm -hmm. Raised the dead. Healed people. Did fantastic miracles. At the end of the three and a half years, guess how many people they had? Lots. 120. (laughs) That was it. 120 after three and a half years of preaching to multitudes. And it was on the day of Pentecost in the upper room when the the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's only 120. Now we have mega, you know, mega churches left and right. And uh, another thing I'd like to introduce while, I, while I'm on this about the Catholic Church. Uh, the Catholic Church religion is built on the Apostle Peter. Okay, and that's Matthew 16. Mm-hmm. And Jesus was asking, well, who do people say that I am? Oh, some say you're Jeremiah the prophet. Some say you're this and you're that Elijah. It said, well, who do you say that I am? Uh-huh. And that Peter steps in her. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but it came from my Father. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Now, let's, 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 let's blow this whole false foundational teaching of the Catholic Church. First of all, God's not going to build a church on a man, okay? Petra, Peter, is Petros. That means a small pebble, like a sand pebble, right? Uh-huh. Okay, Christ is that rock. You can go to the New Testament. The rock they followed in, in Moses was the, the rock was Jesus Christ. If you go through the Old Testament, I don't know how many dozens and dozens of scriptures tell you the rock is Jesus Christ. So that's the, that's what a whole church was built on a false interpretation of scripture. Peter was a man, and his name Petros meant small stone. Christ was the rock, Petra, Petra, a massive stone. And so this whole system, and there's, you know, there's so much in this scriptures. And even though I only have 50 pages in this book, believe me, those 50 pages are going to be, uh, I tell you, controversial, but they're coming from the word of God. God wants to save people. God doesn't want to see anyone perish. But we're coming to the time we're seeing Satan taking over. We, we, we've seen that. And I get into who, even the church sometimes don't know who Satan is. And I, I'm going to, I can't get into all this and take too much time. Right, but exactly. I know who Satan is, okay? And, and one thing, I, and I admit, I, I'm not a real smart person, but one thing I've always had is common sense. And I tell you what. When God preached the word of God, he preached to the common man in his common sense. Uh, you know, you get theologians, you get people in here. That die. Well, figure, figure about it. Christ said, a house divided cannot stand. Whoa. <laughs> we got a lot of house divided out there, don't we? <laughs> how many doctors, I, how many I, churches we got? How I, many? I, I, I think there's been too many as of late all divided. It's getting to be that way. Yeah, exactly. So there was only one church, and like I said, uh, the Lord, I, I, I really believe, had me write this, and I'm a nobody. I, I don't care if anybody knows my name. I'm not here to glorify myself. I want to see this book get out and people t- come to the knowledge of the truth. They'll have the light of God's word to open up their hearts and to show that God is a loving father. He doesn't want anyone to perish. These false teachings of a Lucifer, Lucifer is a bunch of baloney. A false teaching of a burning hell is absolutely insane. And I blow the, all these scriptures away in the book, even mm-hmm. though it's only pages. Now, now, there's another question I had as well, too, Gary. This came to mind, talking about the end times and everything. Of course, you have the book of Revelation, which talk about the seven seals. Some people say yep. the first seal has been broken. Some say the fourth, the seventh. Some say anywhere from two to three, five and six. Which seal do you think has been broken, and why? Uh, I I wouldn't want to try to, to answer that. Um, you know, I, I've got a lot of knowledge of Scripture, but I don't know everything. Uh, Revelation is a deep book, and it's got a lot of metaphorical terms. Uh, and for me to say this and that is so-and-so, I, unless I know for sure what I'm telling you is, is the absolute truth, I, I really wouldn't even want to, you know— get into it because I'd just be, you know, saying things that I don't know enough about to make a true statement. So mm-hmm. otherwise I'd, I'd go ahead and we'd get into what the revelation. I know one, one, <laughs> these people that we see have taken over our country. We've got a white house 
uh, with our leaders that have killed tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands from Afghanistan, from the border, for fentanyl coming through. 105,000 of our kids have died of, of overdose from fentanyl. Not to mention the sex trafficking and all the stuff that's coming across that, millions are coming across that border. We're seeing the floodgates of hell. I don't know if people understand. Uh, Biden is nothing more than a, a, a prostitute being pimped by the globalist. That's mm -hmm. what it is. And that's why he can do what he does, because he's got the whole power, the one world government, the globalists, the Vatican, United, all, all that stuff. So that's why he's doing it. That's why he's blatantly doing stuff that he should be arrested and, and executed for. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. Okay. New Yorker, how about him? Right. Allowing all these people to come through. How about Fauci? How many thousands of people with false information? How many people have died because of false information? False and, and telling people, you know, you've got to have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Right. And, I, of and of course, how, how did Satan actually get past the presidential election? We'll find out just one minute with author Gary Randall Wallace of To Hell with the Devil. It's time to blow the lid off the lose first coffin you listen to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs also brought to you by our official sponsor the mike widener show international warring author mia molson's the missing available on amazon and paperback and ebook we'll be back with author gary wendell wallace of to hell with the devil after this time out the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios if you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with author Gary Randall Wallace of To Hell with the Devil. It's time to blow the lid off of Lucifer's Coffin here on the Mike Wagner Show. A lot of great stuff out there, Gary, you're talking about. And, um, and of course, you know, Satan, uh, as you mentioned, uh, somehow uh, got past the, pre the presidential election of 2020, getting the foot in the door and um, maybe describe about um, how he got in, what's he doing. And of course, you know, what is to really look out for as well, too. This is very interesting. Yes, and uh, when they say to look out for, in the book of Revelations, you know, when the judgments come and the seals are open, et cetera, et cetera, there's one that says it's going to get so bad, they're going to wish the rocks would fall on them so they could die quickly. But God's not going to, God's judgment. And boy, I tell you, some of these preachers out here, I would not want to be in their shoes when the day of the Lord comes. And the day of the Lord, I, like I said, I, I truly believe it could very well come in our time. But that, and that, what, what that happens, what that means is men's hearts are going to be failing them for fear for the things coming upon the earth. So this is why I know the Lord wants to open people's eyes to the truth that's been hidden. Like Paul said, and they're going to turn away from the truth and turn to fables. God wants these fables blown away like I'm blowing away this silly thing about Lucifer and et cetera, et cetera, who doesn't even exist. And uh, But once you read the book, you, you'll understand why. Because uh, I've got, and I, I just back it up simply with the Word of God, period. And that's something a lot of people don't understand. That book isn't just a book. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God, and the Word was God, John 1, 1. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That Bible, that Word of God. And th people think about, oh yeah, but that's been rewritten a hundred times throughout it. No, 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 no. You don't understand. That was not rewritten. It was not paraphrased. It was only copied. 
In other words, the scribes copied word for word, letter for letter, all through those centuries. That's why you got, uh, you know, back there when he found those uh, Bibles there, uh, what was that? And, and they got it. I'm getting old here. <laughs> they, just, they discovered the original books that were the oldest copies of the, of the Bible. And there, and I've got copies of, I, I've got the copy of that. And, uh, Every bit of that word was just exactly as we read it in our King James Bible. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's imperative that people, you know, understand that the Word of God, the Bible, is the truth. And think about this, what, 3,500 years, going back to Moses and the book, you know, uh, 3,500 years and not one prophecy, not one, was ever missed. Every prophecy given in that book has been fulfilled, and, and, and people at least should think about that, that, hey, that's 3,500 years old, and, it, and it, some guy did a thing about the prophecies of Jesus. I think there's some, a few hundred or whatever, and he said just one of those prophecies being fulfilled from the Old Testament prophesying about Jesus, you would have to have a one with 10 or 15, 20, 30 zeros behind it. Mm -hmm. That's how... That's how, you know, just the odds of one of those prophecies come to pass. Yet there's hundreds that came to pass in the Old Testament about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where we, that's where, you know, I like, I'm going to start preaching there, but for, especially for young people today, because they, God love them, they, they, they're so involved with the sex and the drugs and the, and Tifa and BLM and Pride Month and all this stuff. Uh, it, it, it's sad because they, 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 a lot of them I know are depressed, teenagers. That's why they've, a lot of committed suicide. Suicide's way high for, for young people. If they only understood that that cross on Calvary paid for their sins for today, tomorrow, forever. The blood of Christ, that's why I put it on the cross. And if you accept that Calvary, that Jesus died and his blood cleanses you of all your sins, then you'll have some hope. And, 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 and the thing about it is, it doesn't mean you're not going to sin anymore. It doesn't mean you're, you're going to be just a holier than thou. It means that you're saved. And if you do screw up, that always one of my favorite scriptures, a just man, Proverbs, a just man falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked fall into mischief. So that's why I remember years ago, and, and you know, you talk to Christians, and they didn't even know they're saved. And I, and I, I looked at that and I said, my God, what are they teaching these people? Mm -hmm. the Calvary, the cross, the blood of Christ saves you, period. And like I said, it doesn't mean you're just going to overnight turn to a holy angel. You're going to screw up and do pretty much. But what it means is, whatever you go through, I'm going to be with you. I'll take you through it. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I've, the, well, it's been about 50 years now. But every time I've ever come into really bad, serious problems where I think, man, it's the end. God has come through every single time. Even though sometimes <laughs> he'll let you get up to that cliff you're ready to jump off of. And just about you're ready to take a punch. He'll grab you by your collar and yank you back. <laughs> I have, it's, it's happened before I talk to most people. It's been known to do that, yes. <laughs> really? So I, I just... Uh, I'm excited about the book. Uh, I know one thing. Gary didn't just write this. I, 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 I'm just the vehicle he used. You know, that, that's all it is. This book came from the Lord himself. And uh, I know that's making a bold statement, but I could go through, uh, I, I don't even touch in this book, the miracles that me and my twin brother have seen over the years since we served the Lord. But now what we're seeing is, is, a, is a fear, a controlling fear that's taken over this country and the world. And people have got to know the truth because if they don't, this country is gone. And I know they're going to do everything they can by November to stop this Republican surge we see. And, mm -hmm. uh, but this, if people just read this, like I said, it's a short read, so it doesn't take long to read it, but you can, these 50 pages are going to be the most powerful words you'll ever read. I don't know of any man in history, seriously 
that, ever, that has the key verses to dispel Lucifer, key verses to dispel a burning hell, and, and it's all in, the, all in the scriptures. I don't take it from some church doctrine or, you know, yada yada dogma or whatever. Uh, it's all in the Word of God. But the Lord wants God's people and anybody. He wants all those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I pray for that peace of mind because that's one thing, that's something we just... Peace of mind has gone in outer space somewhere uh, for people because they're in such angst. And that's the way this government, that's the way the socialism, communism, they both in the same bed together. That's what they do. I mean, that's exactly. If you follow Hitler, read what he did, how he controlled the media, how he controlled everything in the Jews, made him fearful. And, of course, we know the history of that. Mm-hmm. Even today, it, it, people are, are starting to get really fearful, and I'm afraid the churches have not done their job, their due diligence, and I'll tell you why. Because they preach, they get these multi-million dollar uh, people in their churches, you know, and uh, boy, they pay some big tithes, right? I think we can so, all use some of their tithes, I'll tell you. <laughs> So basically, they don't want to say anything negative. Let's not admonish anybody. You might lose that million dollar, million dollar tither. But I'll tell you another thing, the truth in the scriptures. Nowhere in the Bible, after Calvary, did, were tithes ever taken. Because that was under the law of Moses. The tithes were taken to pay the priest that ministered in the tabernacle of Moses. So after Calvary, tithes will never, it was never preached in the New Testament. The only place you'll find it is in Hebrew, and it's talking about the tithes taken back in the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. Paul only collected money to help, well, the Jews were suffering from a famine. So he collected money for that, but not one apostle, you'll read after the New Testament, ever took tithes again. But that's the key for these people. I got, you got this guy, oh, I'm afraid to mention his name, they mentioned you, Kenneth Copeland. Mm-hmm. He's sitting there, I watch, he's sitting there screaming at these people. And the guy, I tell you what, if I was going to do a movie about the devil, that's a guy I'd, I'd have for the face. Because <laughs> he's scary. He's scary. But he tells these people, you know, and, 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 and yelling at them, you get those ties in here. I don't care what happens. You bring your ties. Well, I guess because they, they had an interview with him, a young gal interview him. He, he had a multi-million dollar jet, but that wasn't good enough. wasn't big enough. And so he needed money to buy a bigger jet. Well, he preaches to these people, you send me your tithes. God is going to bless you, et cetera, et cetera. Your life's going to change. You're going to be happy forever, ever, ever after. All this crap. And these four people are handing over their money, believing these false prophets. So all they can do is keep buying all the new jets and all the stuff they want. But that's not the gospel. If you read the gospel, Paul admonished. He didn't, he didn't hold back. You've got men like, like Hymenus and Philetus teaching the resurrection has passed and destroying the faith of many. You got a guy in the Corinthian church and he says, you got a guy that's sleeping with his father's wife and you're not doing anything about it. You got Alexander the coppersmith. He did me much harm. It says, in other words, he named names, wasn't afraid to name names and to tell the truth and, and admonish people. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, when you're a child, you need a good whacking once in a while, but you know, mm-hmm. save your butt. And, uh, but the churches today, they just never did it. It was always a gospel prosperity message. Uh, okay. Now, Gary, just another question as well, too, before we wrap up here on the Mike Wagner show, you talk about these churches and everything. What about the church? Churches like Smyrna, Philadelphia, Lassian, and also I think there's also um, Church of Corinth and the other churches. Which seven churches do you think are going to survive and which ones are going to fall? Yes. Okay. Gary, are you still with us here? Gary, are you still with us? Yeah, I got, I got you, Mike. Okay, yeah. I, I Yeah, we're having some technical difficulties here on the Mike Wagner Show. Uh, I was going to ask you one more question about the um, the church as well, too. You have the Church of Philadelphia, Smyrna, also Lassian Church, and also um, with the the Corinthian Church and everything. Which churches do you think um, are going to survive? Which ones will be in trouble and why, according to Revelation? Well, of course, the Church of Philadelphia is the Church of Brotherly Love. Uh, if you'll notice in those seven churches, he admonishes every one of them. He, he, he gives each one of them a rebuke. And uh, so I would say just my own way of th- thinking was that Philadelphia, you know, 
the church of Laodicea, you wouldn't want to be part of that because he says, you're lukewarm and I'll spit you out of my mouth. Either be cold or hot. But you'll see those seven churches. He, he you know, he admonishes them. He tells them, dude, you got to do this. You got to change that way. And, and, uh, it's no different today, but today it's, you, you go to church and you get your ears tickled. And I mean, this guy in Texas, Osteen, man, he's, he's a slick, <laughs> he's a slick man. He knows what, it, you know, it's always the same MO. He, he gets up and tells a joke, get everybody laughing. And, and then it's all about, you know, it's a nice, it was lovely, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Sermons, like I said, you get your ears tickled and you go away and say, "Oh, wasn't that a lovely sermon? Was that one that great, honey?" Yeah, and you got and you got a whole stadium full of people follow it. That's why people don't understand. The, the Matthew seven says it plainly: "Straight as the gate narrows the way leads to life, few that be to find it." Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many shall enter therein. For straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. And if you go down the end of that chapter, chapter 7 of Matthew, he tells these guys, well, Lord, we cast out devils in your name. We did this in your name. Lord, Lord, he says, depart from me. I never knew you, knew you, you workers of iniquity. Well, that's pretty harsh words. And he's not talking about sinners out there. He's talking to the church. So people got to understand that it, it's not going to be a white, you know, it's, not, it's a few people that really will love the Lord and stand by his word and go through the persecution that you may have to go through. And I, you know, I pray it's not going to be like the Inquisition again, because, you know, I, I think about those poor, those great men of God that suffered, tortured, burned alive because they believed in Christ or they read the Bible and they were, and they, you know, that's what happened to them. But that, mm-hmm. that was in the millions that he destroyed, that, that church destroyed. Mm-hmm. So I just want to wake people up and say, God loves you. God wants to save you. God does not want to see anyone perish. And all you got to do is come to the cross. That's your hope. And it doesn't mean you're just going to, Turn around and just be a great person again. What it does mean is if you accept that truth, that that blood that was shed on Calvary, your sins are forgiven, not just a day, not just a month, not just a few years, for all eternity. And I could go into, uh, there's a lot of things I could go into. Uh, Revelation 20 and the death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Because uh, everyone talks, well, what about these, this uh, scripture, then that scripture? And I like to, you know, it's answer people and tell them the truth. But unfortunately, that's why we're seeing such a low rate of of church attendance today is because what we're seeing, Satan taking over and uh, watching socialism, communism, all sorts of sinful things happen in this country. And and, and and fearful for famine. They're talking about famine. They're talking about civil war. They're talking about all these things. And it it's keeps people in angst. You know, mm-hmm. it keeps they're fearful. They're fearful in, in these, of course, these vaccines and muzzles. And I'm sorry, I call the, the mask a muzzle, a government muzzle. They hardly do, they, and even Fauci admits, admits that, you know, these most masks don't help you one bit, but then he changes and it goes back and forth. But I'll guarantee you, I could show you in Scripture. Now, they say, well, that's got to be part of the mark of the beast. Yes, it is part of it. That mask, and I can show you in Scripture, and through the Hebrew, uh, through Strong's exhaustive concordance, that that mask has a has a part of the mark of the beast. But uh, obviously, I don't have time to go into it. But that's part of it. That mask and what's happening, it's it's the gateway to the mark of the beast. And, and it's coming. As, as I said before, I never would have thought I would see this. I mean, I knew, me and my brother, because we've been studying with the Lord for so many years. And we knew what was coming. We was going to, but we, I, <laughs> both of us said, holy moly. Yeah. And, and where can we get your book at? Uh, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kindle, uh just about anywhere. Uh, Walmart's got them. You can order them through Walmart. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it's, I know, you know, when people, especially book, and I'm, I, I read a lot. I, I'm, I'm a, you know, I got four or five bookshelves full of books. And then when I buy books, of course, I always like to get a book that's got some pages in it, right? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 300 at least, or, you know, that's good. But this was 50. It's going to be hard, a little bit of a hard sell because, 
you know, it's only 50 pages, uh, but at the same time, it, it, it's selling at retail 11.95 in some places, but a lot of places, and I think I just seen it on was it Amazon for 8.95. Uh-huh. And that's a good place to get them as well, too. We're here with author Gary Randall Wallace of uh, To Hell with the Devil. It's time to blow the lid off the Lucifer's coffin here on the Mike Widener Show. Just a few more minutes. Uh, what else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Gary? Uh, what's coming? Yes. Well, I'd like to be a, you know, a prophet of all those things that are coming. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I, I did sincerely believe we are seeing that scripture about the day of the Lord. It's in five or different Old Testament books, especially in Joel. That's what I'm afraid is coming. And it, it could come very quickly. We're, we're in a situation, let's face it, we've got Russia and Ukraine and all these things going on. It's just going to take one loony tune to press a button. And we'll see World War III and we'll see devastation like we've never seen. Even if you read Daniel 12, it tells you what's going to happen back in, in our day. But I truly believe, uh, of course, you know the church, the rapture. That's the big thing, right? The rapture. Well, yes. And that's another thing. When you die, you go to sleep. Period. How many times in the scriptures do people read it? How many times does St. Paul said, well, don't worry about those that are asleep. For the, dead, for the trumpet shall blow and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain will meet them in the clouds to be forever. Uh, fear not the man that can destroy your body. Fear him that can destroy the body and soul and cast it into hell. And that hell means shield the grave. That's all it means. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's... Uh, it's exciting times we're living in, and this book, I know it's going to go, you know, I, I, I get disappointed things don't happen the way I'd like it to happen with it, but I know God wrote it, and I know from, I could go back to my, and I'm going to make a good little uh, PR for my brother, my twin brother. He just wrote a book called The Extra. Huh. The nobodies, but he goes through. He, of course, he uses all my stuff, <laughs> but he goes through a whole history of things, including our history. Fascinating book for you know for for all the nobodies out there that don't think they're anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the extra. Oh. But anyway, um, yeah, that's that's what I feel, Mike. Uh, it, it's it, it is true that men's hearts are failing them for fear even now, not not in the future. It's happening now. Suicide rates and, and the fear of what's coming and, and seeing what's happened to our government is, is just, it's overwhelming. It's just hard to believe. It's hard to believe that, I always, I always wonder, well, why didn't our forefathers include something in those declarations and Bill of Rights? Why didn't they include something? We got a president that has killed, brought to death tens of thousands of lives and turned our country upside down. Everyone's, you know, people aren't stupid. Even the Democrats said, oh my God, I wish I hadn't voted for the guy. The minute he closed that pipeline, Keystone Pipeline, and now everything is Putin's fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. Putin's fault. Wait a minute. A few years ago, we were exporting our own oil. We could have, we have a large oil, uh, could be the largest oil industry in the world. And boom, right off the bat, mm -hmm. green. Let's get in those, get in those electric cars, shut down, uh, you know, uh, the gas driven engines and all that. And, and that's what, and, and well, I'm, I could get off here. I better. It's a, well, that'd be for another time as well, too. Hey, Mike, that. if I go on, I'm going to have to pass an offering. Uh, well, you know something? It's like, we'll write you a check for whatever. Okay, <laughs> and, and who do you consider biggest influence in your career, Gary? Thanks a lot, Mike. Oh, I, I, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Gary, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, there's no doubt about it. It's the Lord. Uh, th there's several, I mean, that, that I could, you know, I'd have to go back where the first part of the vision came to pass. A church there was a fully old black church. And uh, one of the, uh, this preacher, I mean, I just, unbelievable, unbelievable preach, unbelievable knowledge of the scriptures. And they taught there's no such thing as a daddy devil. God says, how many times in the book? How many times does he repeat it? He says, you, you Jews, you go out and you cut down a tree in the forest. You come home, you, you break it down, you, you, know, you bake your bread on it, you warm yourself, and then with the rest of it, you make yourself a god. And he says, the god can't speak, talk, walk, or anything else. But that's, and he, how many times did he warn? There is no god. That's why this thing about Lucifer falling out of heaven, uh, wait a minute. Okay, you say Lucifer fell out of heaven. Uh, let me put, and I'll end with this. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning out of heaven. 
Uh -huh. Was that the third heaven where God dwells? Absolutely not. The, the tabernacle is the key to this. The tabernacle has three compartments. It has the courtyard, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Those are the three types of heaven. Because we know the Bible says, well, the first heaven and the second heaven will pass away in Revelation. Paul said he was caught up into the third heaven. Well, if there's a third heaven and the first heaven, there's got to be a second heaven. But the key to what I've written, and I mentioned that in the book, is in the tabernacle. And uh, I know it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, like I said, uh, Mike, uh, <laughs> If, if if I last through the next year, uh, it'd be, I'll be lucky because you know I'm not going to be popular. But right. neither was neither was Jesus or those apostles. So mm -hmm. well, oh, well, who was basically? And uh, one more thing: what's the what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I'm sorry. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, you're cutting out, Mike. Could you repeat? Okay. What's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? The thanks. The best advice, yes. The best advice I could give them is what I want to do right now. I've got I've got great grandkids, and they're not in church. You know, my grandson, uh, but they want to go to church. And I, the best thing you could do, especially for your young people, get them in a Bible church, get them in in a, in a good Bible, uh, you know, teaching for kids to learn the basics of the gospel. Because if the Scripture says, if you teach a child in the ways of the Lord when he's young. When he's old, he will not depart from it. And my mom and dad, of course, forced us to go to church every morning. It paid off because look at us. Me and my brother have been serving the Lord for almost 50 years. But my advice to people is that if you can find a good church uh, that doesn't have, uh, you know, Metallica gospel music and, you know, acid rock gospel music, uh -huh. you know, a church that really preaches... And I, I got to add this. When years ago, we, me and my brother got saved in what was called the Jesus Movement or the Revival uh, back in the '70s. A lot of people were getting saved, and we we've seen when people. And another thing, I, and I'm going to throw this in. I've got to throw this in. Praise. Not only are they not preaching being born again, they're not preaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They're not praising the Lord, and this is the key. If you want the presence of God, and I, when we we were in that church back in San Jose, oh my God, we would praise, and we thirty of us would go on the side of the thing, and then we would pray before the service, and we'd praise God, hands lifted up, and I'm telling you, before the pastor even got to the pulpit, you'd see people crying and going down and getting saved. That's what I want to see again. I'm praying, Lord, please let there be a, a good. Or that day of the Lord comes and people can be saved, but it's it's going to be pretty hard now. The condition of the church today. It, it, I'm sorry, but but seek, search for the Lord with all your heart. He says, and you'll find me. Amen to that one. Once again, we're with author Gary Randall Wallace of To Hell with the Devil. It's time to blow the lid off of Lucifer's coffin on the Mike Wagner Show. Gary, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Glad to have you back. We wish you all the best. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact or can people purchase or check out your book? Yeah, they, it's like I said, it's in Barnes and Noble, and then it's it's in Kindle. It's, it's mostly it's spread out pretty well so far, and I'm going to be in three major book shows: uh, Frankfurt, Germany, uh, Beijing, and uh, what else? There's another one I've got going, um, but it, it's just started. I mean, I've just pretty much just published this book, but it's available on, in online online books. You can go to online books, and you can get it there. Uh, it, it, just Google in, To Hell with the Devil, it's time to blow the lid off Lucifer's coffin, or you can Google my name, Gary Randall Wallace, and you it'll come up. We certainly would do so. Once again, Gary, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Glad to have you back. We wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you, and God bless you and all you do. And God bless you, Mike, and your ministry, because God's working through you, and I'm excited about your ministry, and that's really, you first time I really heard about it, but you're doing great things, brother, and, and bringing the truth to people, and I, I appreciate it so very, very much. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project.
Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosinzia of Missing. And powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms. And of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening.